name is Sammy Steele. My Cherokee name that was given to me by my grandmother is Sikorchi. And I usually start off my presentations by speaking Cherokee language because a lot of people would like to hear how the language is spoken. So I always say, Sio, Nigadawu, Sikorchi Dawado, the liquid Janela, Heli Heli, Nigad, Gila Kohigi. And what I said was, I'm just greeting you guys in my Cherokee language saying, hello, my Cherokee name is Sikorchi. My English given name is Sammy Steele. And I'm from Tahlequah, Oklahoma. And it's good that to see everyone here today. But that's what I said in my Cherokee language. So I think today I'm supposed to uh, demonstrate or show you how the stone marbles were made centuries ago. And uh, I think uh, uh, they had mentioned that uh, they were wanting to, uh, or uh, Joseph was wanting or was interested in the rules of the game as well and how it was played. So I'm going to sh share with you today uh, how the stone marbles were made and they were made by hand. And what they did was, and I don't know if you can see this or not, because uh, I, I, let me bring it down a little bit. Maybe you can see this was they would gather their stones that they would use to make their marbles. And what they would do is they would go out in the countryside and they would pick two or they would pick what they would call limestone. And limestone is this rock, uh, it's kind of hard rock that's around here in Oklahoma, but I'm sure it's everywhere. But anyway, what you do is you go hunt for these stones. And when you hunt for them, you get you try to find them by the size of the palm of your hand. Because once you get them by the size of the palm of your hand, that's the one you're going to use to make your stone marbles. And then you go around by the lakeside and then along the lakeside, you'll find sandstone. Sandstone, you find good sized sandstone. This is a pretty good sized sandstone that I have. And what you do is sandstone back then was used like sandpaper. Like today, you can go to the hardware store and get hard sandpaper, soft sandpaper, or medium. Well, that's what they used to do back then centuries ago. They would look for this sandstone. And the redder the sandstone was, the softer the sandstone would be. And that's what you want. That's what you want to use when you're grinding your marbles into the sandstone. And so next, you would go out in the countryside and you would try find a limb and a tree limb. And it didn't matter what tree you got it from. It could be any length. I mean, any type of tree. It could be oak tree, elm tree, just whatever you could find. And you get the limb about the size of this right here. But the, uh, oh, I guess about maybe a 50 cent piece or so. And you cut the cut the limb to the length that you can use as, and because you're gonna make a tool out of this limb, this tree limb. Okay, now you got your stones, you got your sandstone and you got your limb. So, base, oh, and you need some kind of a, a, a container like a, uh, water container because when you start grinding it into that stone, it starts grinding and it bring, it gives out this powder form that it grinds. And so you have to use water to clean that out with and then begin uh, grinding again. So back then they used to use like a clay pot, so a small clay bowl, or sometimes even a empty empty turtle shell. You might find a turtle shell that's uh, that's uh, uh, that's been uh, a deceased turtle or, you know, died out, and they would have turtle shell la laying there in the wooded area. You could pick that turtle shell and you could put water in there and you could use that to clean that out as well. That's what they used to use as a receptacle for water. What kind of stone, okay. what kind of stone did you say, uh, you, what kind of stone did you, say you use for the, for the marble itself? Oh, you, you, you use limestone. Limestone. Well, limestone. Now, what they originally used was granite, but granite is real hard stone. And the next hardest one is limestone. So that's what they would you use today, or that's what we use today when we go find stones is limestone. And again, like I said, it's about the size of your palm of your hand. That's the size that you want for your limestone. Okay. 
Now you got your stone and you got your sandstone and you got your limb. Now what you're going to do next is you're going to make a tool out of your limb, your tree limb. And what you do is when you cut it, it's, both, it's going to look flat on both ends. What you're going to do is on one end, you're going to split it a three prong tool. You'll have a knife like this. You'll get a knife. And what you do is you you can draw a three prong, to, uh, you know, three lines right there. And then you'll get a like a hammer or something or your palm. You know, let's say you have a hammer or something. You knock that into there and start splitting that wood. And then once you start splitting it, you split one side of it like this and you just continue on. And then you go to the other side and continue splitting that as well. And then you go to the third side and split that. And once you get it all split, it's going to look like this. This is a limb that you make a tool out of. And you're going to make a three-pronged tool. Once you get to this part, then you start uh, whittling down the edges right here. Because it's going to be like a diamond shape, okay? So you kind of flatten out those edges right there because once you start putting the stone marble in there to grind it, you want that to grab that stone. And I'll demonstrate this here in a little bit. Now, you may, oh, like I said, you split this three-prong tool, then you get you what they would say artificial sinew uh, that you can get at hobby stores today. But back then, they used to use sinew now, sinew was the back muscle of a deer. And they would, when they hunted deers, they would use all parts of the deer, okay? And so part of it was the back muscle of a deer. They would get that strap and split a slit. Uh, they would peel that into like, it, it looked like a string. And they would peel it real softly, like, I mean, real, they would just peel it. And then the women would chew that. And when they chewed that sinew, get real sticky. And it'd just be like a string. Then they would wrap that around where you split this and tie it around here. Because once you open this up, you don't want your tree limb to split any further, okay? You don't want the split to go all the way down. So you need something to hold that, all right? So anyway, that's how that's how your tool that you made to make your marble with. Do you have any questions about this? Anyone? Bar's still okay. Good. Yes. So, so far, so good. We're keeping up. Okay. Tell me if I'm going too fast or, or, or whatever. So, okay. N now, since you got your tool to make your marble with, you get your limestones. And what you do is you chip the edges because you're not going to find limestone out there that's round. You got to make it round. But you try to get one that's got like a little bit edges on it, but most times they're going to have sharp edges on them. So what you do is you would go and you would tap that. And as you're tapping it, you're chipping the this uh, part of this rock. And as you're chipping the corners off, you're making it round. And you would continue doing this even around these corners here and shaping your stone marble. Now, doing this would take about maybe four to five hours to do this. So it's, it's, it's not like a real quick, you don't make it real quick, like, okay? A good marble maker, it would take maybe a good seven to eight hours in one day to make. But you would have to do it continuously, okay? So anyway, you would chip the edges. And pretty soon, you would start making your stone round. You can get them pretty, pretty round after a while, and then you would continue chipping the edges until you got it pretty round. Now, this is where the sandstone comes in. Now, like I said, you try to get the reddest sandstone you can because that's the softer, softer sandstone. And this was used like sandpaper, okay? You would find an indention somewhere on the sandstone, or you can get your stone and chip that and make a little indention. And what you do now is you get your tree limb tool. This is, let's say this is unfinished stone. You would put this in between your tool and you would place this on your sandstone. Can you guys see that? Mm -hmm. 
Okay. And you would start turning and grinding that into your sandstone. As you grind that stone, that uh, sand, uh, as you grind your limestone into that sandstone, it's going to start making an indention. And like it, and like I said before, as you're grinding it, as you're turning it, it's grinding that stone, and it's smoothing out that side of the stone. But it's also doing making a powder residue into that hole. But that's where you need that water to clean that out so that it can continue to be grinding again. But you just grind, you just continue doing that. Once you got one side smooth, then you turn it over to the other side and continue doing the same thing, grinding it. Can you see what I'm doing? Can you see what, like I'm doing, just grinding into that stone right there, okay? Okay, and then so finally, after you've done this for about maybe three to four hours, then you've got your a stone marble made. And this is what they used to use to play the, the Cherokee traditional marble game. And so it's just made out of limestone. But anyway, that's how it was made. And a lot of people, they, you know, they try to make that and we try to, we teach it here. We teach them how to make these stone marbles. But Sometimes, like I said, it, you can't make it within an hour or two. It takes quite a while to make. When I first started making this, I learned from an elder who taught me how to make these stone marbles. When I first started, it took me about six months to make. <laughs> and I, I, I continued making it and uh, grinding it and stuff like this. And I thought, man, I'm never going to make a marble, you know. But I, And then I give up and put it up somewhere for a while. And then I go back to it again and continue. So finally, I thought to myself, well, I'm, I'm going to continue and try to make it until finally I made a marble. And then I started working on it again, working on it. And now it, I, I'm not a, like an expert marble maker, but I can make them in about two days now. And uh, But like I said, a good marble maker, it would have taken them like seven to eight hours a day. But that's working continuously, okay? So this is how the stone marbles are made. Do you guys have any questions? Anything all, I can, any questions I can answer? Are they all the same size? No, you could make them different sizes. You get different stones and make them, but the original size were about like this size right here. So you can tell the difference. See this one I made, but it's a little bit bigger. But this is about the original size right here that they would play with. Okay, these are the stones that they would use to play the marble game. And a lot of people would say, well, how do they know, how do you know which, which one's your marble? Because you start playing with these stone marbles. You can tell when you make your marble, you can look at it and see what it looks like, and you can tell which marble is yours. So that's what they would play with. And, of course, back then, they were, uh, you know, when they played uh, marbles, they would, each player would try to break your marble, try to make, break your stone marble. Uh, because if they did that, then you would be out of the game. But there'd be other people, uh, they'd be standing on the side of the, uh, when they're, it's not their turn, they'd be standing along the edge watching them, but they'd also be hitting their stone marbles, making them round again. And they might, might not make them perfectly round like this, but they would make them round enough to continue playing. If they broke their marble, they would still be in the game. So this is uh, how they played centuries ago. And that's uh, how they how the marbles were made. Now today they use uh, billiard balls, you know, pool balls. They use those, and it's a lot easier. You can buy them at the hobby store. You don't you don't have to make them. And and uh, and even today you can purchase some that's even bigger. They get, they make them bigger uh, uh, pool balls now. So they play those, and they have tournaments uh, here in Cherokee Nation. They have it during the Cherokee National Holiday. They'll play the uh, the uh, Cherokee Marble Game. Uh, and it's a tournament that they play in. But they also, other tribes play that too as well. The Eastern Band, even the Church, uh, the United Couture Band here in Tahlequah. So, do you have any questions at all? I know you played, didn't do so well this year. You weren't in the tournaments. Oh, well, no, I'm not that, I'm not that great, great a player, so. <laughs> but uh, I do try to play once in a while, but it's uh it can be a it can be a long game 
uh, Dennis Sixkiller, he plays the marble game quite a bit. And he told, he said that when they have in that tournament, that one of the games lasted three hours. So it can last quite a while. But anyway, I, I sent Joseph a copy of the rules uh, and, 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 uh, and the layout of the uh, field. I don't know if you guys got a copy of that or not, but uh, yes. I was going to, yeah. And I was going to do what? Everybody's got a copy, so I want to make sure everybody gets gets a good understanding of this. Good, Karen, good. I'm going to email it to you when they want to get off tonight. Oh, good. I'm going to explain to you guys how the game was played. And uh, those are like real tournament rules. And so they got names for, you know, different lay, uh, the way they they uh, they play. And so these are kind of really hard you, and, uh, to uh, to understand. So I'm going to kind of, I guess you would say, give you an example of how the game is played on easier terms so that you'll know how to play. And once it, once it, uh, I get finished, you guys might want to set up, make a, a marble field there and play the marble game yourself. And so, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll show you an example of how the game is played. I got a board here. I don't know. Can you guys see this board? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to hide behind it. So no, I'm just kidding. But anyway. <laughs> All right, layout of the game is you would have, you have four holes. Just like this, one, two, three, four, and one to the left, five holes. And the distance between each of those holes would be 35, what, 30 to 35 feet. That's the length of the field, okay? And what you would do is like this be the this would be one first hole, second hole, third hole, fourth hole, and fifth hole. Object of the game would be the first one in each of these holes, all five of them, and then coming back and make those five holes again and be the first one to to that hole to win the game. But in tournament plays, they would play, even just for fun, you would play with teams. And each team would have three team members. Now, before I get started on that, let me explain the rules again. Okay, now, each of the holes, let's say this is the hole right here. They're, you're going to have, they're going to draw another hole around it but this one is into the ground they would step on this marble and then the dimension it made in the in the ground is the hole they played out of and then they would have draw a circle about maybe uh in the ground about 10 inches away from this hole all the way around now when you threw your marble you don't throw it at a small angle like this and this way or forward because if you do that when it lands and hits the ground it's just going to continue going rolling what you're going to do is you to toss it you're going to toss it up at an angle to where the hole is and you're going to try to toss it a little bit shorter than where the hole is because once it hits the ground it's going to roll a little bit but you try to try to gauge it and try to get close to that hole or even make it into that hole okay uh, do you understand what I'm saying, right? Uh, I mean, uh, so far? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. Now, like I said, you don't get this marble and you don't throw it like this because it's going to get that top force and it's going to roll and roll and roll. What you do is you throw it backhanded like this and give it a backhand toss because that the marble will be going this way. The rotation will be going this way. And when it hits the ground, when it hits the ground, it's going to kind of put the brakes on and stop. But it's still going to roll, but not as far, okay? Because a lot of people, they will try to toss to this hole. And when they do, they, they just toss it like this. When you uh, And when it hits the ground, instead of getting close to the hole, it'll, it'll continue going. And it may end up over here somewhere. 
But if you toss it at an arch, you throw it at an arch, and then roll, then it's going to roll a little bit, but it may be, it may roll close to that hole. So that's what you're aiming for. Okay. Now, I said this, it's got this 10 inch hole. Now, when you toss your marble, if your marble lands in that, within that 10 inch circle, next time it's your turn, then you can just lay that marble into the hole and go to the next one. But if it's outside that hole, then you're going to have to toss it to and to try to toss it into that hole. Okay. And if you toss it, it hits the ground and it rolls in, that's okay. That's no problem. All right. Now, okay. Now, once you do that, you get all that done, then you go, uh, 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 then you make that hole, then you go to the next hole. Okay. Now, like I was saying, there's three, there might be three people in a team. Now, what you do is you go to the second hole. Here's the first hole. One and two. Everybody goes to the second hole and you stand behind that line, that second hole, and you toss back to the first hole. That's how the game begins. Okay. You go back to the second hole, you toss to the first hole. And Who's ever closest to that hole is number one. Okay. Now, if you're playing teams, okay, let's say you threw yours and it landed right there next to the hole. Your, uh, your partner throws and his goes a little bit further out. He goes right here. Okay. Somebody else goes right here and goes right here next, almost close to it too. Okay. There's one and there's two. Okay. How you judge is on your teams is who's ever the closest to the hole is number one. Second closest to the hole is team number two. Third closest to the hole is team number three. Now, if you got, if you made the, if you made it close to that hole and you're number one, okay, and you got teammates, you 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 choose, you can choose your teammates or you, or they can choose it for you whoever or you want. If you got three team members there. If you're close, you're you're number one. If your other teammates way out here, that doesn't matter. He's still your teammate, so he gets to throw. Everybody on your team throws first. You get that? Everybody on your team one throws before the second team starts. It doesn't matter if you're over here if you're over here or if you're over here, if your team one then you you throw, but you have to throw from where you're standing. Okay, you have to be where if you threw your marble over here, you have to stand there and throw it. Try to make the hole. Me, I can try to make the hole, but if I'm get within that circle, next time it's my turn, I can just put it in the hole. Now, you can't hit your opponent's marble in the first hole. That means that if I'm sitting here and somebody else is here, they can't hit my marble and knock it out of the way from the hole. Everybody has that opportunity to make that first hole. Now, when you make that hole, that first hole, then you can toss to the second hole, okay? Your, and your other team members may still be trying to make that hole, but you continue on. Now, here's where it gets interesting. That's a game of strategy, I guess. Once I go over here, if I make this hole, instead of going to the third hole, I can throw my marble right here and leave it right there, but next to the hole. So the next, if a next player, let's say he's on an oppo opposing team, comes over here and lands over here. Okay. Now, Second hole, you can hit your opponent's marble. Now, that means you can keep them away from the hole. And sit before, and since I made that hole, I could either go for, next to the next hole or stay there. But what I'm doing now is I'm blocking that hole for my other teammates to come up. So when next time, it's uh, let's say our teams. Maybe maybe got within that circle right there. Next time he can make it. Well, 
and now it's his turn, okay? So I'm laying here, and it's my turn. I drop it again, and it just, now it's just uh, team number two. Well, you don't want him to get into that hole before your teammates do. So I can go over here and toss my marble and hit his hit his marble. And you can't roll and hit him. You got to toss it in the air and hit him in flight. Let's say like 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 this. Okay, this is his marble. He's next, saying next to the hole. I can't roll it and hit him. It's got to be tossed and hit him. Or right. you can bounce once and hit him. That's legal. And let's say he's sitting right here next to the hole, but I don't want him to be next. I don't want him next time to be in the hole. I go over there and hit his marble and knock his marble way off down the down the deal. Okay, like let's say next time it's his turn, but he's sitting right here next to the hole. I hit his marble. His will go maybe knock his marble way down here. So next time it's his turn. He's not sitting here. He's sitting over here. So now he's got to toss back over here to make that hole. In the meantime, if I if you hit your opponent's marble, it's still your turn. So you don't lose a turn. So I can, after I hit him, then I can continue and go to the next hole. Well, my teammates over here, they 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 make that uh, they're within that hole or they made the hole. Then they can come and try to make this second hole. But see where this other team opposite uh, the opponent was sitting over here. He's sitting over here, and so they're trying to try, uh, they're trying to make it as well. Then I can go to the third hole and I can make that hole and stay there and block that hole. In case can somebody I stop you else for a minute, Sammy? Yeah. yeah, I'm the only ahead. one that doesn't have the instructions in front of me, so I I should apologize ahead of time. But so but far, I think you've talked about three phases of play. Yeah. The first phase is figuring out which team goes first. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so exactly. you're, the second hole, you toss it to the first, and that's just determining which team goes first. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but, and also the order within the team. So, like, if I'm the closest of all the marbles, then my team goes first, and I get to start play first. Yes, and then awesome. you, you play, then your teammates play. Okay, they, and they then that's all your team. Okay, yeah. so now you're actually in play. So I see this as actually the second phase of the game because there's specific rules just to get into that first hole. You're not allowed to hit your opponent's marbles. Okay, exactly. So everyone on my team tries to get in the hole, and they get a second try, or no, you get one try, once, and then everyone and from then the other team tries once, or. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, you, team one will play first, try to make it in the hole. Okay. Then after all uh, the team members play on, on team one, then the second team will, will play, try to make the hole. Then their teammates will try to make it, and then so forth. And then after the second team plays, then the third team will play. And it, you just take turns playing, okay? And so, and like I said, it doesn't matter – where you're laying, if you toss your marble, let's say this is the first hole, you toss your marble, and your marble goes way out here, and your other teammate is sitting right here next to the hole, you still have to throw your toss your marble from that, from that area, okay? And what they do is when you stand behind your marble, let's say it's your marble, you pick it up, and when you're going to toss it to this hole right here, let's say you're going to toss that hole, there's an imaginary line. Now, when they play, some of them carry sticks, long sticks. They'll lay those sticks there. You, your hand or your leg or your foot cannot go over that line. You have to be behind here and toss it. And that's that's the way the game is played. Do, do you get that now? you understand that? Yeah, but I guess what I'm confused about is if you're not allowed to hit anybody else's marble in that first hole, so yes. It seems like Everybody there's a bunch of marbles it. laying around that first hole. Everyone's trying to get in, but they didn't quite make it. Do you have to lift that's, them like that's... in golf? Uh, no, it, you, they, the marbles stay there. Uh -huh. Every marble stays there. Everybody has the opportunity to play. If there's like, a, here's the hole, and there's like 
six or seven marbles laying around there, you don't move them. They, uh, you, they, they stay there. If you're right here and you're trying to make this hole, you just toss it and try to make that hole. But if you accidentally hit a marble and knock it out, well, that's okay. Okay, that's okay. So he's he can uh, the next person here can toss it and to try to make it in that hole. So you don't try to keep anybody away from this first hole. But once you get to the second hole, that's where it gets uh, it gets uh, kind of uh, exciting, I guess you would say. You try to keep everybody everybody away from the hole. So as you play that, do you, do you pretty much understand how it's played now? And you pretty basically have to play the game to really understand it. And uh, but uh, it's a fun game. Uh, you can play the game. Uh, just make the whole four, five holes and play the game. But anyway, that's how the rules are played. Now, that's if you're playing teams, okay? And and uh, okay. Now, if you're playing teams, here's one, two, three, four, and five. Each team member has to make each one of these five holes and come back for the team to win. Just because you're the, you're uh, you're ahead of the, everybody and you're team number one or team three. If you're team three and you make this hole and come back and you get into this hole again, that doesn't mean you win because your other two teammates got to complete the whole holes and come back too. To, to in order for that team to win okay so it's a team sport it's a team game every team member has to uh, come back to the first hole and for them to and be the first one to make it to that first hole to win is that pretty understandable or yeah yeah yes okay and it's a little bit like um, what's that game on ice Oh, where oh. The people throw the thing and they yeah. sweep, and they Cur hit each other's Cur things out of the way. What is it? Curling. 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 Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. yeah curling. I, I, and I'm this is also, to... yeah, and this is also similar to uh, croquet or, or uh, bocce ball, you know, things like this that they played. And so this is how they would play it. Uh, now, here's another uh game um, you can it's the same game but only if you want to play individually you don't have to play with teams you can play individually now here's the rules for that am i going too fast or do, can, do you guys understand him pretty good yeah, yeah I, I know it's kind of hard to, to keep up with it because like i said you more or less have to play the game to really understand how it's played but it's a fun game, and 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 uh, so. But uh, this may be easier, okay? Again, you got your four holes. I mean, five holes. One, two, three, four, five. If you play individually, now you can play individually and doctor each one, but you still start from the second hole and toss to the first hole, okay? First hole is still. You can't hit your opponent's marble. But if you make that, you can go to the second hole. Okay. And then after you make that, you can go to the third hole and so forth. You don't you're not blocking the hole because you're not playing teams. You're just playing for yourself. Now, let's say uh you go and make each of these holes the first one, and then you go back and make these holes, okay. You go back to the first hole. That you don't win the game. You become poisoned. <laughs> and by what they say, poison is once you make that, then and when it's your turn again, and you play again, like one, two, three. I might be one. Somebody else two. Maybe you're three. And and so you take turns. Okay. You can hit your opponent's marble over here if you want after you get going just to keep them away from the hole so you can continue being the first one to go you just you try to keep each every opponent away from the hole okay and but if you miss if you miss hitting your opponent then you lose your turn 
then it's the other person's turn. Okay? So that's how you play the game. Now, once you made that hole and you, you become poisoned, you can go to, you can toss your marble to any hole you want. There may be a bunch of uh, people over here, maybe three, four, or five marbles here. You can toss over here. And once you're over here and it's your turn again, you can hit one of these opponent's marble. If you hit their marbles, they're out of the game because you're poisoned. Okay, and then you try to hit the other ones and try to get them out of the game by hitting them and they're out of the game. But now, let's say somebody else comes up and gets to that hole, they become poisoned. So now you're not the only one poisoned, the other person's poisoned too. And so they can come and go anywhere they want and they can hit you or you can hit them. But if you hit one that's poisoned, you have to hit them three times before they're out of the game. Okay? But they got to hit you three times, too, to get you out of the game. So it's it's pretty fun. It's pretty easy. And that, that one's pretty easy to play. So, and it can be fun and, you know, and, and, and try to keep away from each other and, and all that. So it's, it's not bad. But like I said, that's, that's pretty basically the rules to play the game. But again, you may want to... Uh, 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 play the game and try to, uh, you know, but do that. Make a feel. Make a feel of like a five holes and go out there and get some pool balls, okay, and then use those and then try to play the marble. And you can follow along with those rules that uh, that was sent to I sent to Joseph, and maybe he can send them to you as well, ma'am, and, and you can get the rules. And But they're pretty easy to, to play and, and all that. So, But was that pretty – Understandable. I mean, you know, the yeah. game of marble. Does a person just get one throw? Do what? Do, 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 do you just get one throw to go to the? Well, you, yeah. When you're tossing your ball into the marble, you just throw it. Uh, you just throw it one time, and then uh, and then it's somebody else's turn. But if you hit their marble, trying to keep them away from the hole, like I was saying, uh, if you go over there. And hit the opponent's marble, knocks them out. It's still your turn. As long as you're hitting them, but you can only hit that person two times. I mean, hit their marbles two times, not the person. Hit the marble two times. Well, if you hit them two times, then they're considered dead. You can't hit them again. If you hit them again or accidentally hit them, then you lose your turn. But uh, but as long as you're hitting somebody's marble and you're still hitting them, it's still your turn. But if you miss them. Then you lose your turn, and then it's the next person's turn. So that's how the game's played. Do you guys have any questions? You know, I noticed the name, Karen Six Killer. Is that your last name, Six Killer? Yes. Yes, I'm Six I have Killer. A, do you have any relations or relatives up this way? or are you, you heard, Is it, that your husband's name or your... Your name, no, your last name. It's my mother's maiden name. I, I took oh, my mother's okay. maiden name. Yeah, oh, okay. there's, we have people, but I couldn't go to the reunion at the holiday. We had a big um, family reunion during Cherokee oh, holiday. Yeah. Yeah. But I also had a little art booth on the um, Heritage Center lawn. So I, I couldn't okay. go. So I don't know my exact relations out there yet. I haven't connected yeah. with them yet. Well, but I Dennis with... Sixkill is related. He's oh, related. Good. Yeah, I work with him. Uh, matter of fact, our offices are next door. So, yeah, I work with Dennis uh, quite a bit. So. That's guy. cool. I wanted yeah. to really thank you for also giving us some strategy on how to play the game, right? Like cool. the fact that you told all of us, hey, now you don't want to get too much top spin. Like you didn't have to share that tidbit. <laughs> we could have had to learn that the hard way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, and and uh, it's just part of the game too that uh, you know you try to uh, you use strategy and stuff like that. So, uh, but it's 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 a fun game. It's it really is a fun game. But uh, it's just like I said, you have to play it really in order to really understand how it's played. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's a fun game. They play here at the Heritage Center on Thursday evenings. 
and they play on Sunday afternoons. They play so, and anybody's nice. welcome to come and join and and play if you're ever in this area. So, that's pretty fun to play. Do you, does anybody have any questions? Anything you have a uh, questions about? Do I have to bring my own balls? My own ball, my own marble. If I show up at the <laughs> your own marble. <laughs> well, because yeah. I might have already lost mine. <laughs> no, you don't have to. They ha they they have a, a set of uh, pool balls there that you can use and uh, and borrow marble there and play. So yeah, yeah. So it's 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 uh, you always anybody's always welcome down there. So to come and play. Okay, thank you. But, you got any, any questions at all? Anything? Oh, it don't no, even have to be. Yeah, can you hear me yeah. okay? Yeah. Um, I was stuck in traffic and I didn't get to see the wood that you, uh, the two prong stick that you use, three prong stick that you use to make the marble. Oh, okay. It's a, what you do is, and you can get this off of any tree. Uh, it doesn't matter. It can be a, a, off of a, Oak tree, uh, elm tree, uh, any kind of tree. Uh, all you're doing is getting a piece of limb, and you cut that limb to the length that you can work with. And once you cut it, it looks just you know where you cut it, it just looks flat like this. And then what you're going to do is you're going to mark it three different directions and make a three prong tool out of it. And if you got like an uh, when you do that, you start splitting it. You just get to that point, and then you put uh, put your blade right there, and you get something like a like a maybe a, a hammer or something, and tap it. As you're tapping it, it's cutting into that piece of tree limb, and it's splitting that. And then you go to the other where you marked it, and do the same thing, just hitting it and knocking it down, and then finally go to the other third one to finally it starts splitting on you. And once it splits on you, it's going to look like this. You're going to make a three-pronged tool. And once you make that three-pronged tool, it's going to still have that kind of a, a triangle shape on, on inside. So what you're going to do is you're going to get your knife and you're going to whittle that. And you're going to whittle that down to it's kind of flat, where it's kind of flat like this. See where it's kind of flat? And the reason you do that is because it grabs the marble. It'll grab that stone marble a lot easier that way. And when you're turning it and grinding it on that sandstone, okay? And then you use sinew, but today you can, we use artificial sinew. You can get at hobby stores, whatever. And you wrap that around where you split it so that when you open it up, the wood won't split any further down. You don't want it to split. And then you can open it up as wide as you want because it's already tied up. It's not going to split any further. And then you can put your marble, your your uh, marble that you're working on, and then you can put it on your stone, uh, your sandstone, and then you can turn that. See how it turns and grabs that and turns that. That's what. That's how you make your uh, your tool out of your tree limb, and that's what causes that to turn. But that's it. Yeah, and you can use any tree you want. It doesn't make any difference what type of tree it comes from. But that's what you make your tool with. And uh, everything I showed you here, everything I showed is done by hand. And so, and if you notice, I know you can't touch it or feel it, but if you can see pretty close how smooth that is, and how round and smooth it is, that's because it's the grinding. Good. There you go. Yeah, that's of course the grinding on the sandstone, because see, it's it's like sandpaper. It grinds that round. Once you get one end pretty smooth, you go to the other end and grind it with your tree limb, and as you're turning it, it's it's grinding that. But again, you need to have a cup of water or some kind of water container. Every now and then, it gets that white substance. And it won't grind, and so you have to pour that water in in the into that where you're grinding it, and it'll clean that out, and it'll start grinding again. So that's the reason why it's you need water. And if you do work on one like this, make sure you're wearing older clothes that you're not you don't mind getting dirty or wet because you're going to, it's going to get a little muddy 
from turning that, you know, and, and the water splashing a little bit. But I mean, you're not going to get covered with mud, but, you know, it's, it, you can get some little uh, mud stains on you and stuff like that. But that's how the, that's the kind, what the, the tour that they made. But like I said, all of this that you see right here, all these stones, all these tree limbs, all of this is all handmade, not touched by, machine hasn't touched any of it. And people are amazed at it and wonder, wow, I said, you made that? Said, yeah, and and uh, and you can make a stone marble and it's not hard, it's just time consuming. Because I said, like when I first made it, it took me like six months and I thought, oh man, I'm never gonna make this. But then I continued on and continued to finally I made one. So you can make a stone marble, just don't give up. And uh, even if it takes you six months or a year, just continue working on it because uh, I did. And now, like I said, it, it takes me about maybe a couple of days to to make one. And uh, but I don't do it continuously. But uh, but I do it. Uh, you know, I'll stop every now and then, get me something to eat or or or, or, or you know whatever. But then I'll, I'll come back to it and do it again. And now I'm got to where I can make them in a, a couple of days. But a good marble maker uh, uh, back then, it would take about maybe. Uh, uh, eight to seven hours to make in one day, but they can work on it continuously. So, but that's how they make the marble. Does anybody have any other questions? Any questions at all? Uh, I believe we may be related. Um, my great great grandfather was Samuel Still, and he came over the oh, trail, yeah. trail of tears. Wow, wow. Well, my great grandmother, I mean, my grandmother's great great. Uh, uh mother was uh, born on the trail of tears yeah and so her name was coffee lucy uh well it was hawkins it was lucy hawkins but she married my grandfather whose last name was coffee but my dad and them they were he's a steel yeah and uh they were they were raised and born from uh toward adair county yeah. steels and stuff so yeah we could be very well related so yeah and his daughter was a minor still and she married my great great grandfather. Oh wow! But uh, well, that's good. That's great. They, yeah, they were they were eld in, in the Elton area. Oh yeah, well yeah, so, yeah. There are there were some stills there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I'm just from around here. I'm from Tahlequah, back this area. I tell people that when I was younger, I used to go visit my uh, uncle and my aunt, my cousins in Stillwell, and. A lot of people say, well, where, or is that where you were born? I said, no, I was born in Claremore, Oklahoma. I lived in Tahlequah, Oklahoma, and I feel like I was raised in Stillwell, Oklahoma. So everybody everybody kind of laughs about it, but in a way that's, you know, uh, that's why I feel that, yeah, I was born in Claremore, lived in Tahlequah, and raised in Stillwell, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. But any other questions? Any questions at all? All right. Well, one, maybe one day I might make my way up your way, and maybe we could play the marble game. I can show you. So, Sounds uh, good. But until then, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys uh, got an idea of how the, the marbles were made and, and a kind of idea how the game's played. So maybe you can um, make your own marble feel and, and play game up there, and, uh, and maybe we're gonna have to try it. We're gonna have to try it. We're gonna have to try it. Oh yeah. It. So, I mean, there is one other question. Oh yeah. I have a question for you. Yeah, Sam's yeah. Where do I find marble? It's like, what part in the game are people placing marble? So in your in your <laughs> list of terms you sent us, uh, Sammy, there's there's a state that says. In Cherokee, how to say where do I place my marble? And that's the question she's asking. Oh, where do I place my marble? Uh, yeah, I don't have my list with me. I, I uh, uh, can you uh, pronounce that a little bit? Can you can you say that? Uh, when are you placing your marbles? So we understand you're going to throw it, but when does place come into term? Right? When does place a term that makes sense? Oh. Oh, when you're when you're playing in a tournament, uh, people will say, uh, uh, "Where do you where do I place my marble?" Means that if somebody knocks your marble out of the way, or knocks it accidentally, 
then they will come back and say, well, where was my marble laying or where can I place my marble? And that's what they would say. So that's more tournament play then, right? Do what? That's more for tournament play than friendly games? Yeah, that's for, turn yeah, that's for tournament play. But when you're playing for fun, you can pretty basically just make up your own rules. We played marbles over here at the house all the time. We had to feel, kind of got bored playing it, the, the, the five holes. So we kind of made a, what would you say, a obstacle course out of it. We put a hole underneath a, a, maybe a tree limb where you had to duck and toss it and or up on the little hill, you know, where you try to make it. And if you didn't make it, it roll back down and you just try. So it's a fun way of doing things. You know, you can make them, make them, you'll feel any way you want to. So, it, it, you know, but these are the basic rules and this is how it was played. But like, like, you know, you can, like a basketball, you can play like horse or, or, you know, things like this, you know, you can do that with marbles as well. So it's just whatever you want to do. It sounds like there's no, there's no way to break the game by just playing it. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's right. That's right. Sammy, I greatly appreciate you taking time to share with us today. Well, it's good to be with you guys this afternoon. Uh, uh, I, uh, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, I always enjoy, uh, uh, you know, teaching the way of playing the marbles or teaching how to make them or, uh, or even just doing storytelling or whatever, you know, I really enjoy that. So I'm glad you invited me today to do this and I've really enjoyed it. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, so maybe we can do this again another time, you know, we'd love to have you back anytime. Good. Well, you guys come up here toward Tahlequah again, come and visit us, and, and maybe we can play marbles out there at the Heritage Center when uh, when you come down. Sounds like a plan. We'll have to figure that one out. We'll make it work, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for having me, and uh, I hope you guys have a good rest of the afternoon and an uh, enjoyable one. And, uh, Hopefully we'll all be in person sometime in the future. So uh, I want to thank you for letting me be with you guys today. And, and uh, I hope and appreciate and hope that you uh, got at least some kind of idea of the game, you know, so and how it's made. So We'll be working out the details and trying to find a way to make sense of it. But it'll be fun to re rewind this and do it again. Okay. All right. We will. And so, uh, how are you? What do you Hello, Sammy. Hello, Sammy. Uh, Bye-bye. Uh, how are you?